What if you can be in touch with your audience constantly and keep selling to them nonstop? What if there's a system that keeps on building your brand on complete autopilot? Would you be interested? I've one word for you, MailChimp. It's marketing automation at a whole new level. It can be your ultimate nonstop selling machine that will keep building your brand and make you more money day in and day out. There are many tedious tasks that you can automate in your business without your intervention on a daily basis. MailChimp is designed for busy people like you and me who want to be able to focus and make best use of our time. You configure a few settings and MailChimp gets it done. Hello and welcome. You are now looking at MailChimp.com. MailChimp.com is designed to send email newsletters as well as manage a database of subscribers and customers. One of the claims to fame is that it has templates for individuals to use and automation at every level of subscription. It's being used by brick and mortar business owners as well as e-commerce business owners. And one of the other benefits of using MailChimp is that there is both a free level and a level of using their autoresponder that grows along with your business. For example, you can see that up to 2,600 subscribers, the individual would pay $35. And if that 2600 became 22000 then the individual would pay $150 a month. Now, depending on how a person runs their business, MailChimp will allow you to prepay them in order to send an email according to the number of subscribers that you have in their pay-as-you-go system. Now, MailChimp as a service is actively used, extremely popular, and regularly updated. And you'll be able to see that simply by going to their What's New section and scrolling through past edition. Now, MailChimp does have what they call their Pro Marketing System, which allows you more advanced features, but it's considerably more expensive at $199 as a base, and then an additional amount based on how many subscribers you might have. Finally, MailChimp also has the transactional email service, Mandrill. Now, Mandrill can only be used if you have a monthly paid plan. So, for example, you cannot use Mandrill with a totally free account. You will have to have an upgraded system. We will take a look at Mandrill in this course. Hello and welcome. Now, in this video, we're going to discuss affiliate marketing and other concerns inside of MailChimp. Now, MailChimp states that it does allow affiliate links to be included campaigns. However, they'll stop any campaigns that links to a blacklisted URL. In addition to this, they'd rather not have things that they consider to be risky as far as the business that you are conducting. So, for example, it says that MailChimp is not okay to use for work at home opportunities. However, it is okay to market your business that you run out of your home. So, MailChimp defines explicitly work from home, make money online and lead generation opportunities, multi-level marketing and affiliate marketing, credit repair, and anything that falls into these categories is considered to be prohibited content. Now, as of January 31st, 2018, MailChimp defined affiliate marketing and affiliate links. Affiliate marketing is considered to be the kind of marketing where individuals are rewarded for recruiting customers. Affiliate links are basically described as product or service recommendations. Of course, what MailChimp defines as a blacklisted URL is of most importance because if you send a link to a blacklisted URL, they will suspend your account and review it. The company defines three kinds of links, advertisement links, product or service recommendations, and links to prohibited content. And basically, we've already gone through what they mean by prohibited content. So before you direct link out of your email, you'll want to determine whether or not the URL falls into the blacklist on one of these areas. Of course, if you have questions about whether or not your company fits into this compliance, you can contact MailChimp's compliance team on their prohibited content page. So for a solo business owner, one of the most important determinations to make is whether or not your company is a work at home opportunity or you market them, or if you are marketing a business that you run out of your home. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video.
Welcome back. Now in this video, we are going to walk through the process of creating our first list. And from the home page, what you're going to do is you're going to go to this area and click lists. And then you're going to click create list. Now you can subdivide your list. In most cases, what you're going to do is start by creating a brand new list. So you'll want to click create list from this point. What you want to do first is give your list a name. And then you'll want to use a default from email address with this list. Now, when you write this default email address in, you want to avoid using email addresses like Gmail or AOL or Yahoo or any generic inbox that other individuals have. If possible, you want to use an email address that is connected to your business domain name. And also, for the sake of deliverability, you want to avoid using emails such as support or admin or anything that is generic in this box. You'll then want to go to the default from name. And this name will be based on anything that you want to brand the list by. Now, if you're upgraded to a paid account, if you choose to upgrade to a paid account, you can customize your campaign URL. However, what we're going to do is we're going to proceed with an account that has not been upgraded. I'm going to write in a reminder of how people came to be on this particular list. Now, this address will be the one that you placed in when you set up your account. If you want to change that address, you can change it in this area. That address will be associated again with this list. It will appear at the bottom of all of your emails. Now you'll have the opportunity for each individual list to enable double opt-in. In most cases, you will enable this, with the exception being if you are going through a process where you are using an API or you're using this as an after-sale email, then you will not enable double opt-in. However, in most cases, if you're going to meet a prospect or customer for the first time, you'll have them double opt-in. I'm going to go ahead and click double opt-in in this case. And the rest of the setup involves how you want to be notified. You can get a daily summary of what happened, one by one notifications as they happen, as well as one by one unsubscribe notifications. So whichever one that you desire, you're going to go ahead and click it, and then you're going to click save. And now your list is ready to be used. Welcome back. Now in this video, we are going to go through the process of importing contacts into a specific list. Now note, we are already inside of a list that we just created. And what we're going to do is we're going to click import contacts. And that will bring us to three ways to import contacts. We can either use a CSV or Microsoft Excel file, or we can use an integrated service. So for example, if we were to click integrated service, You'll note that we can import our Google contacts. We can import from Eventbrite or any of the services that are mentioned here. So in this case, we might choose to import from Eventbrite. We'll then need to authorize the connection to Eventbrite. Eventbrite will then ask for permission. We will give it. Now in this case, we don't have existing subscribers or contacts in Eventbrite. Had we had them, we would be able to import them from this page. If we were to use Google Contacts, we'd again authorize the connection. And then you'll determine what part of the contact that you want to import. Perhaps you'll want to have the first name and last name, and then that'll be it. If you want to import more information, you can click this link. You'll then give MailChimp the permission to upgrade your account if the number of contacts takes you over the free plan, and then you'll click Next. You'll then want to match up the columns. For example, you'll notice here that we have two unnamed columns. What we'll do is we'll edit them. We'll make them first name and last name, and then we'll click Save. Once we do that, we'll then click Next. You'll then determine how you want the contacts to be handled, subscribed, unsubscribed, or cleaned, and then you'll click Import. 
and you'll then have contacts inside of your list. Once we have that list, we can then go back to Add Contacts and click Import Contacts. That brings us back to this screen where we can go through this process again, again with either CSV files, Excel files, or integrated services. And once we choose either CSV or XLS, we can then click Next. Now you'll note that MailChimp will remove any duplicate addresses. They do not send confirmation emails to imported addresses, and they are trusting that you've gathered proper permission to send to every email on your list. So you will want to make sure that that is the case. Once you do that, you'll then click Browse, and you'll then click Next. Again, you'll take out all of the columns except for those that indicate email address, first name, and last name. And once you click Next, you'll then be at a screen that'll tell you you are ready to import. What you'll do is you'll determine how you want those contacts to be placed inside of your list. You can choose to auto-update your list, and this will mean that if you have individuals that are already there, it will not include them, as well as to update any contact information. Once you are ready, you can then click Import. And you have now imported individuals into your MailChimp list. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we are going to create sign-up forms for our list. And if you look at the very top, you'll see that there is a link that says Sign-up Forms. When you come to this page, MailChimp will give you six kinds of forms you can create. General forms, embedded forms to work with your WordPress blog or some other website, a subscriber pop-up that you can use with code, form integrations that you'll use with third-party applications, Facebook forms, and then forms that you can use when you are working offline. And so you'll choose a particular form. In this case, we'll choose the general forms. We can decide to let our subscribers pick the email format that they want to use. And then we're given a sign up form URL that we can pass on to our subscribers. The first part of the process, you're given the base form, where if you just want name, first name, last name, and preferred format, you can use that format in order to start your design. You can add any fields that you want to add from this right hand corner. And you can change the existing fields by working on the right hand side menu tab where it says field settings. So we can toggle back and forth between add a field and field settings. Once we have the form structured the way we want, we'll then click design it and we can change background color, we can change the body, we can change the default text, the link style, and then we can add in what are called monkey rewards, which will give us the opportunity to promote MailChimp to those with whom we are in contact. And if you're using the free account, and if you are using the free account, MailChimp will require that you do include their monkey rewards form. You can add a translation feature into your form also. What you can do is you can click in auto translate if you want to have the form translate into or out of the default language. If you choose this setting you can click save translation settings. Once you've done that in order to use the form you can use the URL that MailChimp gives you can also use this QR code if you'd like to use it in that way. And MailChimp gives you a handy way of being able to share this link on your Facebook profile as well as your Twitter file. Now the form is auto saved so if you want to create different forms you can do that. Your form is now ready to be used. Now that you've completed the sign up form you'll want to go through the entire menu. So you'll see here that you can go through the sign up form with alerts. Again, you can customize and translate the information. You'll then want to go and customize your signed up thank you page. 
and what you can do here is that instead of showing this thank you page you can actually send your subscribers to a specific URL but once again you'll have the three steps of building designing and translating this particular page You'll then want to customize the opt-in confirmation email and you can write in what you want this email to say by clicking this edit button and you can change the verbiage to say what you want it to say when they're confirming their subscription. You will then want to customize the captcha information where they are determining whether or not the individual is a human being. You'll have the three steps here again to design and translate you'll then want to change your confirmation thank you page. Once again, you'll have the three steps design and translation. You'll be able to edit this information in this box. And you'll go through each one of these steps and you'll customize all of the information. Now you can leave it as the default setting and MailChimp has it set up so that the default information is all the basic information that you need but you can go through each step of this process that your client or your prospect will go through when they're signing up for your email where you can actually customize each part of the data. Now if you feel that you just want to go back to the beginning you can click reset defaults and you can start over all again. And since all of the information is auto saved you can then distribute your sign up form using this URL. And you have now created a basic sign up form that you can deliver by URL. Welcome back. Now, one feature unique to MailChimp is that you can both replicate and combine lists. And to do that, you are going to go to the list area. When you get inside of the list tab, you're going to pick the list that you want to replicate and you're going to go to this drop down arrow and then you're going to click replicate list then you're going to name the list that you want to replicate once you've renamed it you'll then click replicate then you'll have a second list with all of the same settings as the list that you replicated with the exception of the individual subscribers that you had within the list you replicated now you can also combine lists so you can go to this drop down arrow you can click combine lists and then you can choose which list that you want to combine and in this case we're going to choose our how to work with MailChimp list we'll then click next we'll then write in confirm and then we'll click combine lists what's now happened is the subscriber from this list has now been moved into the list that says how to work with MailChimp. And we have effectively combined our lists. Welcome back. Now in this video, we are going to configure the settings in your profile. And to do that, we're going to go to the top right. We're going to go to this drop down menu and then we're going to click profile. When you get to the profile area, obviously you can add in any identifying information in addition to a photo. You can also determine how you'll be notified. You can do that by both SMS and email. However, now if you want to be notified by SMS, you are going to need to enable this in the account security tab, which we are going to go through in this video. So what you're going to do now is you're going to go to the settings tab and then you're going to click details you can determine your account name but most importantly here what you'll want to consider is the time zone so as MailChimp displays your statistics you want to make sure that you're displaying these statistics in your time zone you can change this in this drop down area now if you are a marketing agency and you're working with other organizations using MailChimp you can click I'm a marketing agency in this box and when you do that you can then click save MailChimp will then ask you for some industry information which you can give them. Once you've done that you'll then click save. And if you want to receive newsletters from MailChimp you'll determine which one you want to receive and then you'll click save. 
You'll then want to go back to the top of the settings tab and then click users. Now, if you'd like to invite another user to the account, you can do that. You can click invite a user. You can determine what kind of user you are going to have, an author, a manager, or a full admin as you are. And you can write a message to that individual and then click send invite. That person will then be invited to create their own MailChimp account or to join yours. And so what you'll want to do is have that individual make sure to click join this account. They will then need to create a username and password. That individual will then be part of your account at the role that you have designated them. You should then be able to refresh your page and then see the individual added to your account. And then you'll see the new user. You'll then want to go to your settings tab and then go to the security tab. You can use two-factor authentication. You can verify your account with SMS. As we discussed earlier, you can then click enable or you can choose to be verified with security questions. And if you want to assist MailChimp in helping them to be more effective in their data mining, you can choose to do that or you can leave this unchecked. You can then go to the contact information. You'll make any necessary changes. You'll then want to look at your verified domains. And of course, we went through this process with our email address. Now the authentication with domain, we will be going through in a separate video. Now you'll be able then go to the manage my data tab. Manage my data will allow you to export one copy of your campaigns, subscribers, list and report in one single zip file. And again, you'll only be able to do that once every 24 hour period. So when you're ready to start building your data backup, you can click build my data backup. MailChimp will tell you that your data backup is now being built. You'll then want to go to the pause or delete account. And if you want to pause your account while you're not going to be using it, you can do that. However, that's only going to work if you are a paid account. If you would like to permanently delete the account, you will then be able to do that here in this area. And of course, you're going to get the warning that someone else is using the account. So you have now successfully configured your settings. Welcome back. Another unique factor about MailChimp is that it integrates directly with a number of third party web applications. In order to find these integrations, you'll go to the integration tab here inside of your profile. MailChimp will display a number of these integrations right on your front page. Now, if you don't see the application or the site that you work with, you can go to a different address to look at another set of connections. And you can access this page at connect.mailchimp.com. And when you come to this integration, you can write in the integration that you may be working with. And MailChimp will bring back a number of matches and can choose the one that may work for you. However, it's quite possible that you may not be working with a specific application. However, what you can do is you can scroll through and browse the applications that MailChimp connects with. Now, in some cases, you're going to see this orange gear on one of the integrations. That means that the integration is going to be indirect through the third party connector app called Zapier. We're actually going to look at that in a separate video. So once you've chosen your integration, you can click the one that you'd like to work with and then you can follow the instructions for connecting your application to MailChimp. For example, if you search PayPal, you'll see that there are two integrations and then at least one indirect integration and then another connection through Zapier. Welcome back. Now in the last video, we talked about the fact that in some of the integrations, you'll notice that there is a gear and it's orange. And that gear represents Zapier integrations that are really third-party applications being brought together in this one application. 
So in order to find out those web applications that integrate with Zapier and MailChimp, you'll need to first go to Google. And the simple search will determine the integrations. For example, if you write in MailChimp, then Zapier, then integration. And the very first search result will be MailChimp integrations with Zapier. You'll want to click inside of this link. And if you'll scroll down, you'll be able to determine which applications work with Zapier and MailChimp. Now you'll see a number of 100 different applications. If you browse through the list of integrations, you'll see that there are going to be at least 100 and even more. In fact, there is a message here on the integration page that says MailChimp now connects to 1000 apps on Zapier. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to sign up for a free account and then go into your account to determine which apps integrate directly with MailChimp. And when you get to the page that says explore workflow ideas, you're going to write in MailChimp here. And then you'll click MailChimp. And then one way to scroll through the different applications that work with MailChimp is to write in the application that you want to integrate with. Once you have that application, you'll then click it. And you scroll down, you'll see the exact integration that works together with MailChimp. Now, if you just want to browse all of the integrations that work with MailChimp, what you'll do is you'll get rid of the go to webinar here, and then you'll be able to scroll through each of the integrations that actually work with MailChimp. And you'll scroll down to the bottom and they'll keep asking you to show you more. Now a Zapier integration will take you through a process once you have set up your account. You can start with a free account with Zapier and you can also move up to a paid account if you find it necessary. By clicking use this Zap, you'll go through a process that will be outlined for you in this description page. In order to get started connecting the two applications, what you'll need to do is to click create this Zap. And that will take you through integrating the two web applications. So again, if you find that the direct integrations do not work for you, one other alternative to use would be to use Zapier to do a search and then to determine whether or not you'd want to invest in a paid account. Welcome back. Now in this video, we are going to walk through the process of securing your account. And if you go back to the settings tab, you'll notice that there is the security tab, which we talked about earlier. If you click inside of this link, that's going to bring you to this page where you're asked to do two factor authentication as well as account verification. We're now going to go through the process for two factor authentication. And there are two ways to do it. You can use an authenticator app or SMS account verification. So to start the process, we're then going to click enable. Now to go through this process, you are going to need to have an authenticator application on your mobile device. And one of the most popular applications is Google Authenticator. However, there are others that you'll be able to use. MailChimp recommends Authy, Google Authenticator, and Authenticator Plus. And then we're going to enter the Authenticator application ID. And then we're going to click Submit. And we have now enabled our two-factor authenticator. We're going to make it required for the following user types. And basically what we've done is that everyone who is going to be anyone other than ourselves, we're going to make them use the two-factor authentication process in order to verify that they have access to this account. Once we've completed this process, we can then click Save. We can also verify our identity through SMS by clicking Enable. We'll then enter our country and mobile device number. We can choose then to enable two-factor authentication using the number that we place in and then click Verify. We'll then have our MailChimp verification code on our mobile device. We'll then enter it into MailChimp. We'll then click Verify. And then we will have verified by SMS. We can also verify our identity by security questions. 
And lastly, we can also verify our identity by security questions. And by writing in the answers to these questions, MailChimp will keep them on file in case we lose a password. We can be asked these questions so that we'll be able to get access to the account. Welcome back. Now in this video, we are going to go through the domain verification process, which will help you with deliverability using MailChimp. To do that, we're going to go to this right hand side menu. We're then going to click profile. We'll then go to settings and then we'll click verified domains. We're now going to go through the authentication process. Now, if your domain name and your hosting are in two different places, you'll typically have to have your host do it. And your hosting company can either walk you through the process or in some cases, depending on what kind of hosting you have, you can have this process done for you. And so you'll want to fill out a support unit if you have a level of hosting well they'll do it for you otherwise you can go into your host support and get individual instructions on how to attain the process so now we've made the individual request and we'll now wait for the change to be made now it's quite possible that your hosting and your domain could be in the same place if that's the case you can actually undertake this process easily within your DNS settings and what that will mean is that you'll come into your domain DNS settings. You'll then click add. You'll then select first. You'll select a C name record. And you're told that the C name record for K1 domain key will be used with this value. And you'll see the values in this way. You'll then click save. Once you've done that, you'll create a TXT record with this value. Now, instead of writing out the entire host, you'll write in the at sign and then you'll click save. Now, once you've undertaken any particular method in order to authenticate your domain, you will then click authenticate domain. And then MailChimp says that it will take 24 to 48 hours before the changes will propagate and your domain is ready to use. Now, if everything is set up correctly, MailChimp will tell you that your domain is authenticated and you will then be ready to use it. Hello and welcome. Now, once you have verified your domain inside of MailChimp, you can then expect the best possible deliverability. So you can now then create a campaign to send a broadcast email. And to do that, you're going to go to the campaigns tab. And when you get there, what you're going to do is to create a campaign. And since we are creating a broadcast email, we are going to click create an email. We are going to give our campaign a subject. And then we're going to click begin. First, we're then going to add recipients and we're going to choose our list. And what we can do then is we can personalize the to field. So for example, if we click this button, we can then use what's called a merge tag. And if we use the F name merge tag, then what will happen is MailChimp will attempt to send according to the person's first name, whatever we have inside of our database. We can do it with the entire name, first name and last name, or just last name or something custom. But in this case, we're going to send according to first name and then click save. Then we're going to determine who the email is going to be from. We want to use our verified domain and so we'll change this email address to the one that we have verified. And then we'll click save. Then we'll determine the subject line that the client will see when they open the email. And then we'll write preview text and this will appear in the inbox after the subject line. Once you have those things written, you'll then click save. Once you do that, you can click design email. You can choose a template or you can go with simple text. You'll do that by dragging the box into the preview. And then you can use it to write in where you want to write. 
we can style the content and then we also have additional settings so if we want to use two columns we can do that once we've completed our writing we'll then click save and close to this box and then we can drive other boxes into this side and we can delete ones that are already there And so we can drag in any of the content boxes that we want to have in our email. And once we've done that, all we'll need to do then is click Save and Close. Before you'll send, you'll then click Send a Test Email. Now MailChimp gives you some options when you send your test email. You can send to certain account users. You can include instructions and you can include those who need to be notified. Once you're ready to send your test message, you'll click Send Test. And you'll see the test email in the inbox, and you'll notice that there is the MailChimp Monkey Rewards button. So once we've confirmed that our test is what we want it to be, we can then either schedule the email for a future time, or we can send it right away. You can send at a specific time on a specific day as you determine. And so that is the process of sending a broadcast email. Welcome back. Now in this video, we are going to create follow-up emails. And to do that, we're going to start by clicking the Create Campaign button. We're then going to click Create an Email. And then we'll click automate it. And then we can use one of the templates set up by MailChimp. There are some for subscriber activity, for e-commerce, some that are date based, and then some using the API. What we're going to do is we're going to create our emails from scratch and we're going to click custom. We're going to give our campaign a name and then we're going to select a certain list and then we're going to click begin but once we come to this page we can then determine what the trigger is and so we're going to click edit trigger now MailChimp has several different kinds of triggers and the most basic kind of triggers fall in the list management area and when someone signs up to your list that will be the first trigger so we're going to click sign up now this email that we're about to create will wait one day after the person joins our list. We can also trigger this when subscribers are imported and then also send them an email one day after they are imported. So we're going to click yes and then we're going to click update trigger. What we're going to do now is we're going to design the email. Now once you've written in all of the email information, you'll then click next. You'll then choose a template. In this case, we're going to click simple text. Again, MailChimp gives us the freedom to design this email to look however we want it to look. However, if we're just looking to write a basic email, we're going to drag in the text block that we want. And then we're going to put in our content on the right hand side. Once we've written, we'll click save and close. We'll then design the rest of the email. We can delete the boxes that we don't need. And once our email is ready, we can then click Save and Continue. And we have now written our first follow-up email, which will happen one day after individuals join our list. We can then write a second follow-up email. We'll then go through the design process. We'll then click Save. Well then, once again, we'll structure our email. We'll then delete the boxes that we don't want. Once our email is the way we want, we'll click Save and Close. And then we'll click Save and Continue. And basically now we have another email that's set to come out once this email has been received. 
So this email will go out 24 hours after this one has gone out. And of course, the time will be determined individually by when someone joins the list. Now we can determine that these emails will go out on certain days. So for example, we can make sure that the email gets sent either every day or on certain days. We can determine when an email is sent. We can send at a specific period of time. We can only send between certain periods. We can do this however we want. And we can determine that these videos will go out under certain conditions. We can do that based on segmenting emails. We can also choose that something specific can happen with a subscriber using the edit actions feature. And we can determine that post sending action in this area. And you can do that for each individual email in the campaign that is automated. So now you have learned the basics of creating an automated campaign. Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking about basic list automation. Now, it's quite possible that you will want to send broadcast emails to one or all of your email marketing lists. And then what you might have is you might have a case where one of your lists you have as a prospect list and that means that they're receiving automated emails. And then you might have other lists that are just receiving your broadcast emails. That would mean then that you would want to have individuals automatically removed from your prospect list and moved into one of your broadcast lists when they undertake some kind of action like purchasing a product and then subsequently joining a list. And this is traditional list automation. A person joins a product list, they're then removed from a prospect list. So how would you do this in MailChimp? Now MailChimp's automation is trigger based and message based, which allows you to do some complex automation. However, that means then that there's no easy way to do a basic list automation. So to do this, we'll need to employ Zapier. And Zapier has a specific automation for MailChimp. We can have individuals removed from one MailChimp list when they're added to a different list. And that is exactly what we want to do in traditional basic automation. So in this case, we'll use Zapier to undertake this process. And as you can see from the description, that is exactly what this zap is all about. So then we'll click create this zap. The trigger will be when someone joins a specific list, we'll click continue. We will then connect our MailChimp account. We'll connect our account to Zapier. To do this, we'll need a verification code we'll get our MailChimp verification code. We'll test the account to make sure it's connected. Once we see success, we'll then click save and continue. We'll then choose the list that we are triggering. We'll choose one of the lists. The list that we choose should be the one that customers are automatically added to when they make a purchase. So we'll now click continue. We'll test the zap by clicking fetch and continue. Zapier will tell us we are successful, then we'll click continue. Now we will choose the list that we will have people unsubscribe from when they're signed up to the new list. So we'll click continue. We'll use the same account, so we'll click save and continue. We'll now choose the second list. And once we've done that, we'll then click continue. And once you get to this stage, you can choose to send the test to MailChimp or you can skip the test and then click finish. Once your zap is on, you are now ready for basic list automation inside of your MailChimp account. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we're going to go over some basic campaign settings in our broadcast email. So we're going to go into the broadcast email that we created earlier in the course. And what we're going to do is we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom 
and you're going to see an area that says settings and trackings and we're going to click edit. Now if you're using the free account you will not have access to conversations so we're not going to go over that presently. Now one of the things that MailChimp does in this auto convert video tag is that it gives you the opportunity to have MailChimp scan your video to make sure that your video will actually be shown properly and that it will not hamper your deliverability. So to do that what you'll want to do is you'll want to click auto convert video. By default MailChimp tracks the number of people who are opening your email. You can choose not to have that statistic tracked but in most cases you will want to track that information. If you are connecting your site through e-commerce you can have your links tracked in this area. And then at the very top you have Google Analytics link tracking. And so what you'll want to do is you'll want to name your campaign for Google Analytics. Now the other three settings are optional if you have Clicktail, Salesforce, and Activity and Capsule. Now to actually have Google Analytics work you'll need to have made sure that you have connected Google Analytics. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the top button here. We're then going to go to Account. We'll then go to our integration section and then you'll want to make sure in this section that Google Analytics is connected through Google in this area. And once all your settings are ready for your broadcast you can then click Save. Now for automated emails the settings will work slightly different. You'll click this link and then you'll head up to Workflow Settings. Once again, Conversations is only present for paid accounts. You'll be able to track opens, e-commerce, and then any clicktail goal tracking or Salesforce. You can change the title of the Google Analytics and you can then tick Auto Convert Video. Once your settings are what they should be, you can then click Update Settings. And you have now updated the basics in your campaign settings. Welcome back. Now in this video we are going to talk about creating and using templates. And what we're going to do is we're going to go inside of the design email tab. And we're looking at an email that we created earlier in the course. Now one of the options that we have is to take this entire email or whatever we created, even if we have additional boxes and additional elements inside of the video, we can then take that entire email and use it as a template. And all we have to do is to go here to the top link and click Save as Template. We're then going to name our template. Once we do that, we'll then click Save. And then MailChimp will tell us that our template has been saved and will appear under Saved Templates whenever we create a new email for a workflow. So now what we'll do is we'll return to the workflow. And if you add an email, and you scroll down and then we click Design Email, that'll open us up into this page. Once we write our information in, we'll then click Next. And when we come to this page, you'll see some of the templates that are there created by MailChimp, but we're going to click Save Templates. And basically, we have a template that we have used before, and all we're going to do here is we're going to click this button. And basically now we have the entire email ready to be used and all we'll need to do is to click save and continue. Now we can view all of the templates we created by going to the home page, clicking this top templates button, then you'll see there's the template that we created. Now one of the things that we can do if you pull this drop down button is we can export this template as an HTML. One thing that you'll want to be aware of and MailChimp is making you aware of is that you won't be able to use the drag and drop blocks in the imported version. So knowing that you'll then click export template. And that template is now saved on your hard drive. Now there is also the case where you would be able to import a template. In order to do that you click create template and then you'd click code your own and then you'd click import URL. You give your template a name 
and then you find the file on your hard drive. Once you have it, you'll then click upload. And you'll see all of your content inside of your email. And so now what you'll do is you'll then click save and then you'll click save and exit. And so now you have a new template that you have imported from HTML. Welcome back. Now, one of the things that MailChimp makes available are landing page templates for you to use to capture leads. And to access them, you're going to go to the reports tab. And then you're going to go to this landing pages tab. Once you do that, you're going to click create a landing page. And you're going to give that landing page a name. And then you'll select the list that those that opt in will be subscribed to. And then you'll click begin. And like the email, you will have the ability to design this template. If you don't want something there, you can take it out. If you want to add something in, you can add it in by dragging it in here. If you want to change the text, if you place your cursor inside of the area and then you click the edit, then you'll be able to edit on the right side. If you want to design the actual box, you can click design. That means then that you can change the page. You can change the header, the body, and then you can play with the mobile styles. Now, once you've completed your work with the design, you'll then click save and continue. Now we'll give our page a title and URL. We can edit this and make any changes that we want here in this box. We'll then click save. And now we have our page title and URL. And what we're going to do now is just publish the page. And we'll then click publish. We then have a landing page to present to prospects for us to capture leads and place them inside of our list in MailChimp. And it's associated with one of our existing lists. Welcome back. Now in this video, we are going to connect our MailChimp account to our WordPress website. And you'll notice inside of your integrations tab that there is no direct integration with WordPress and MailChimp there. So we'll now go to the connections page and then we'll do a search for WordPress. You're going to see several options there and we'll choose the one that is most general, which is MailChimp for WordPress. When we come to this page, we can scroll down to the bottom and we can visit the website and we'll then download the plugin. And then we'll either download the plugin or we can go straight to our WordPress blog now that we know that the author of the plugin is Ibericode, we'll now look for that plugin inside of our plugin installation page. And if we click to add new plugins and then we type in MailChimp, we'll then see the plugin by Ibericode. And this is actually the easiest way to install a plugin to your WordPress website if it's already existing. And we're going to click install now. Once it's installed, we'll then click Activate. We'll then see MailChimp for WordPress as part of our plugin set. We can then see the menu on the left side and we can go into MailChimp. Now to connect to our account, we'll need to get our MailChimp API key. And you can find that API key inside of your settings and then inside of extras and then click API keys. Once we get to this page, we can click create a key. We'll then copy that key back to this dialog box inside of WordPress and then we'll click save changes. And now that our plugin is connected, you'll see that there are the list names that we have been working with inside of MailChimp. We can then click form. We can give our form a title. Then we'll determine which list this form should subscribe. 
Then we'll click add new form. We can then preview the form and we can see exactly what it will look like on this page. We can then copy the code and place this code inside of any WordPress post or page. So now you have successfully connected your MailChimp account to your WordPress website. Welcome back. Now in this video, we want to work with some of the existing templates inside of MailChimp. And so to do that, we're going to edit one of our existing emails and we're going to use a different template. And what we're going to do is we're going to click edit design and we get back to the design page. We're going to go to the bottom and you'll see there that we can toggle back and forth between the template and designs. We're going to click template. Now, there are a couple of ways of changing the look of the email. We can actually change the layout. We can actually change the theme also. So in looking at the themes, we can look through several different genres. We can choose one and then click select. When we do that, we will be changing the entire template. And like our other template, we can place our cursor inside and then we can edit the content. So in each case, what we can do is we can walk back by going to the templates and then choosing one that best reflects what it is that we are trying to do in that particular email. And MailChimp's templates are extensive enough for us to be able to find just about what you'd want that you can adapt. And of course, once you have the template open, you can always add to that template and take away things. So for example, you can add in other text blocks. You can add in other images. You can add in video. So in just about every case, you can start with a template and then you can add to it with the design elements. And each template is individual to design. So you'll be able to work with the page design in this particular template and the free header. But again, this will differ from any other template that you actually use. So using the template and the theme, you will be able to create the look that you want and then add content in a way that makes sense for your particular email. In conclusion, we have now been through the process of creating campaigns inside of MailChimp. We've created automated campaigns and regular broadcast emails. We have been through the process of creating lists as well as sign up forms and landing pages. And we've gone through each process of the settings from the details, the users, security, contact information. We went through verifying domains as well as both managing data and pausing and deleting your account. We've looked at the direct integrations inside of MailChimp, and we've also looked at the custom connections with third-party applications. In particular, we looked at Zapier, which connects some third-party applications which do not integrate inside of MailChimp. In fact, we found that the most basic list-to-list -list automation can actually be done in Zapier. Finally, we also made sure that we were connected to Google Analytics so that we would be able to track all of our activity, also using the stats that MailChimp gives us. So having understood now all the basics, you now know enough to start sending email to subscribers using both broadcast and using automated email. <music>